welcome. Today we're going to be looking at mechanic scams. We're going to be reacting to a video from Scotty Kilmer. You may know him, you may not have known him. As someone with, oh, I don't know how many call it, 40? Yeah, we'll call it about 40 certifications uh, through a very well-known automotive manufacturer. I believe I would be more than qualified to uh, sit there and say whether or not they're scams and whether or not they actually do or do not affect the vehicle. So with that being said, we're going to dive into it. Now the lady who owns this car is a new customer. She had taken it to one of the chain discount auto repair shops. Some young kid was working on it. When she got it back, it still smelled exactly the same. She knew something. What is he going on about? They didn't do a very good job fixing it. Instead, they put a valve cover gasket in, or probably even worse, they put the gasket on crooked or something and it's leaking even more. Okay. Well, it's taking a fight. Too late for that. Relatively easy job, and I just got a few of my tools and parts to clean. Well, okay. Be running back and forth. Basically, you just need the socket. So he's talking about... So he's talking about a valve cover gasket that was bent or something. And he says, oh, yeah, I got all these tools here. And he just <laughs> he pulls out a bunch of sockets and ratchets. And it looks like he's got freaking, what is this? Wait, wait. Can I zoom in? Oh, I can't zoom in. It won't let me. It looks like freaking gardens, garden shears or some, like, Paper tough pliers. Oh God. Okay, so he's take off the stupid beauty cover. It's just in the way. Really doesn't serve any purpose other than making it more annoying to repair. I've never understood why they they yeah, bolt those down. The Rubber grommets do just the same. It's another ten millimeters. The swab is one, two, three, four. You can take them all out easily. And I put the spurs up here so I don't lose them. And if you're the forgetful sort. See, I never do that only because I get a magnet tray to hold down my bolts. Only because if I sit there and I put them up on the cowl, and then let's say something goes wrong where the cowl cracks, or you didn't realize that you had to replace the wiper arms on top, don't, don't put your bolts there. They'll get lost. Or take a picture of it with your phone. Then you'll know which one goes where, and you won't screw up putting it back together. Oh, look out. Move them out of the way. Put them over here. Now they're out of the way. Then we got to oh, take these kicked. stupid hoses out. Just twist this. Off comes the PCE hose. And there's another hose here. On this end, you squeeze a little clamp. This one's a little stuck, so we'll tie it with a screwdriver. That's the easy way to get them out. Now that's out of the way. Then we just have to move all the bolts that hold it in place. They're handy enough. They're all 10 millimeters too. We just loosen them one at a time. There's a whole bunch of them all over the place. Don't forget the ones in the middle and the ones in the back. Can't even see back there, so get the old flashlight out so we don't miss any of them. Now they're all loose and we'll take them out. Can remove them one at a time. I'll put them in the front here so I'll remember where I put them. <laughs> Once you loosen them, they real easy to get off by. Okay. Hand. Real close, make sure they're all gone. Alright, nothing to hold. Use an impact driver. You use an impact driver, which is like a little drill. It, the bolts will come off and they'll do it ten times faster than you can do it by hand. There's absolutely no need to do it by hand, you're just dragging out the process. Off we pull. It comes off. They put a new gasket in Can't quite hear them. But they twisted it and had it crooked. So it was leaking down. Now, we're not going to make that mistake. So I use this 3M weather strip glue. When I get the new gasket, I'm going to put a little glue on the inside. If you notice, when I pulled this off, it just fell out. Not being glued in. When you put it down, it pinched sideways and then leaked. You, you don't ever glue down the entire channel of the valve cover gasket. Ever. You, you're really not even supposed to put silicone in the valley of the valve cover gasket. You're just really supposed to put it on the machine metal part of the head. To glue certain spots, push it in, and let it dry for about half an hour, then it won't slip and pinch like it did with them. Then while we're waiting for the gasket to come, they're delivering it. We're going to wipe the edge off. Get all the oil off it fell through when it was pinched. 
the whole way around. Get it nice and clean. While we're waiting, we'll see this thing has 72,348 miles, which for a Toyota RAV4 is nothing, even though it's 12 years old. It's barely broken in, and when we look at the top of the inside of the engine, it's in immaculate shape. Cams are all clean. There's no sludge buildup or anything. Our so when he's talking about the cams, he's talking about this area right here. Um, these lobes right here are what hit the valves to open them. Uh, there's two different ones per cylinder. You have uh, the exhaust and the intake valves. Um, and this one, because it's a dual overhead cam, you have or DOHC, you have um, four cam lobes per cylinder uh, for the valve timing solenoid. Basically, it's a piece of metal that clicks in and out uh, for vari variable timing so that you can get a little bit more oomph out of the engine uh, if you wanted to. Everything's nice and shiny. This car's been taken care of in a timing chain, tight as can be, which is a good thing. It was a much better design when they went to timing chains. Originally, they had timing belts that were rubber would break, and they were a pain in the butt to change. These have chains. Chains that already take care of it. They can last basically forever. Since yeah, I'm running on YouTube country. Uh, the timing chains. So the timing chains, they're, it's a, it's a yes and no situation on the, um, on the timing chains versus the belts, whether or not it's good or bad. Uh, really, the difference is, uh, one is oil driven. Uh, you have hydraulic tensioners inside, just like you would a belt, uh, just like you would an engine belt. But, um, yeah, it's it, it doesn't make a difference whether you have a belt or a chain. It's just one one wears out a little bit more, but it's easier to replace. If you or uh -oh. is struggling with any kind of progressive hearing loss or persistent the chains inside the engine, the cover's off so we see inside, it's bathed in oil the whole time so it stays lubricated and it can right. last indefinitely. Now we have the gasket, what we'll do is we'll plug little bits of the... Again, but if you've ever seen, you know, a dragster with the with the giant, uh, the giant blower on the front of the hood, that rubber thing that's connected to the blower, <laughs> that's a belt. Just to give you an idea as to how easy it is to change these things out, it's not hard when you have a timing belt versus a timing chain. Timing chain is a pain in the ass to replace. That's why it's done every once every 120,000 miles or so. This weather trim, sealer and little parts, everyone. What in the are you doing? Little here, little in the middle. What here, are you? Whoa! In the middle. Oh my God! Little, put that on tight so. It you might as well just seal the entire thing with silicone at that at that point. No need for a gasket. Just place it on top, bolt it down, and call it done. There's there's no need to put that much silicone in these in these channels right here. There's no need for that. There's tube seals. They're gonna be tight. They're gonna sit there just fine. To go from here all the way to there and say, oh yeah, that should be enough. No, that's way too much. And then you can see it here. That's not a little. That's that's a glob of the shit. What is he doing? Doesn't leak. Dry out. Then you just get the whole gasket assembly. Check out which way it goes. It goes this way. And we'll start putting it on. And realize this goes in the middle. So we'll push that in a little. And you just feed the whole thing around. Press it in so it snaps. You want it in tight. It's made out of rubber. It's not going to snap. It's If it snaps, it's broken. That's nice and tight. And make sure it's all in its grooves the whole way around. It won't sit in the grooves. You filled that up with silicone. The previous person didn't do it. This fell off when I picked it up because it was just in loose. When he put it on, it twisted. This way, it can't twist. You make sure it's nice and solid in with the 3M weather stripping. You didn't even clean the oil out. It's still sitting there on the valve cover. You didn't even clean it out. Like it's it's like he has this list of steps to do that he pulled off of some forum, and he's like, okay, so I got to take the valve cover gas, take the bolts out, take the valve cover gasket off, 
We're going to take a bunch of silicone and, and make sure that it sticks to the, to the gasket itself. Then we're going to put the gasket in. This and guy has no too. idea what he's and talking let about. It dry about an hour. Okay, now it's dry. You can see you can hang it upside down. It's not going to fall off and mess up like the previous guy's work did. And we simply place it back in place. Line up the studs. Get all the wires out of the way. Well, a little wire stuck over here. Then we'll start with the big bolts in the middle because you want to tighten it from the middle out. And that that part's the true. One, so we'll put this one here, and there's one in the back. Bro so should have retired the before he began. Out. We'll do the back middle one. Get it finger tight. Then the front middle one. Again, tight. why are you using hand tools? Two, we get them finger tight. Then we do all the other bolts working our way out. Then once you snug them all up from uh -huh. the inside out, you uh -huh. then get them tied with a ratchet from the inside out. So okay. We'll start on the back. And what's the we'll torque spec for that? It touches and then just a little snug. The same thing here. Get it so it's. And, and what's the torque spec for that? I, and you know what, country, that's not true because I bring my impact driver home if I need to do some work on the car. Snug. He, he's using, wait, wait. He's using Duralast sockets. Where, where did you pick them up from, AutoZone? Get it so it's snug. Then we'll do the inside one here. The other inside Those aren't one. blue points. Those are Duralas. I'm sure. I've seen them before. One, the top one here, and then the top one on the other side. And then the last two. Now we know they're nice and tight. We know they right. didn't bend and twist okay. and leak it like before because we had glued parts in so it didn't fall down and overlap. Yeah, yeah. You glued it in with silicone, um, which you shouldn't have done. Anyway, you... you and leaking like before because we had glued parts in so it didn't fall down and overlap. Now we find the hose. That's so, so what's the scam in that? We're, we're almost a third of the way through the video. Where's the scam? Oh, yeah, bro. His hairline's There's done. There it His is. hairline's that trash. On, squeeze that clamp. On it goes. Mm -hmm. Then we'll go over to the other side. Okay. Through the PCV hose. Squeeze the clamp. Put it on. Now mm -hmm. the ignition coils go back on. Get them out of the hole they fell into. That one goes there. It goes here. And that one goes there. And we put the four 10 millimeter bolts back in. You got to wiggle to line them up. Sure. Then we just tighten them all up. Then we get the ratchet out and finish them off. Then we're going to check the oil cap. The old one, the gasket's pretty much it flush. It's worn there. out. Here's a new one with a new gasket. You can see this gasket's going to seal better than this one. So we're going to change. Let me see that again. Let me see that again. You can see this gasket's going to seal better than this one. So we're going to change. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Show me the old one. It's pretty much flat and pushed in. Okay, most most engines look like that. If it's a leak, hold on. So you have head, valve cover gasket, valve cover, oil filler cap. If you're changing out the oil filler cap because of the oil leaking, what would possess you to think that it would be two steps below and a bigger job unless you were trying to scam someone as a mechanic? Flush. It's worn out. Here's a new one with a new gasket. You can see this gasket's going to seal better than this one. So no, it's not because the there's no too. groove for so it. People often don't think about the cap, but that dumb gasket can wear out, so... It's on, spin it, get it nice and smooth. I would also like to point out that if there was any, any valve cover gasket issues, which there is not on this car, down here, right, where we were watching him bolt up all them bolts with the Duralast socket, um, you would see, you, can't, you wouldn't be able to see these grooves down here. They would just be completely black, completely black, coated in burnt oil. It's not. And, of course, you don't know how much oil is lost, so we'll check the oil. Well, it's not even on the dipstick, so we're going to have to add some oil. So we'll add some oil. Put it in one quart first. And as we measure it, you can see it's, it's on the bottom It's not even on the dot. dipstick. That means it needs a whole quart. So in goes another quart. <sighs> so we'll check it again. And now it's on the top dot. It's full. Okay. Put the cap back in. Make sure that gasket doesn't fall off. And, of course, we're going to start it. So he strikes me as the type of person that... <laughs> If your oil's running low, 
just throw more in. And if you're due for an oil change, just put more oil in. Why wouldn't you tra- why wouldn't you change the oil if you're doing something that involves opening up the engine? Especially for something as sensitive as he was talking about the timing chain and the cam lobes. Why would you even take the risk? Turn it up, check for oil leaks. Broken flex pipe. And voila! No more leaks! Exhaust is broken. Okay, that that was number one. So I guess he... Is he saying that he scammed the customer? I, I'm, I'm not sure on that. Now this Toyota overheated. This guy took it. By the way, this is the... If I'm correct, this is the same Toyota Matrix that he's been bragging about for years, that it's his 14-year-old Toyota and it lasts forever. They, they don't. To the Toyota dealer. Toyota dealer charged them $531. And all they did was change the radiator hoses and put new coolant in. Talk about a ripoff. But the worst thing is, it didn't fix the... Wait, wait, wait. Let me see that bill again. Overheated. This Come guy on. took it to the Toyota dealer. Uh-huh. Toyota dealer uh-huh. charged them five. Oh, he made sure to pull that away. So right, right up there is where it would tell you exactly what was done. And he made sure to turn that away. Seventy-four dollars total labor. Two seventy-three total parts. Two hundred and fifteen. You're gonna tell me. That a, uh, you're going to tell me that, that parts for a rad hose is $215.20? I don't think so. And 273 that's, oh, let's call it, um, I'd call that about an hour and a half for labor. An hour and a half for labor, so $200, you're, And all they did was change the radiator hoses and put new coolant in. Talk about a ripoff. Yeah, you know what you get for $215? You get new radiator hoses and a new radiator and a coolant flush. That's what you get. The worst thing is, it didn't fix the car. It's still over. Coolant is one of those things where I work that we, we just top it off. We don't even charge a customer. We don't say anything about it. We just top it off because it's one of those expenses like washer fluid. You, you bring your car to a dealer to get your oil changed. You're, you're getting a washer fluid. For heating. I see that so much these days. Everybody's in a hurry to make money. Just yeah, change yeah, yeah. the hoses and put coolant in. Yeah, geez, Scotty. Everyone, <laughs> i got to get my shots in. Everyone's uh, trying to make quick money, huh? For $531. Okay. They obviously did not road test the car. He got it back. It's still overheat. So I look at you don't have to road test a car to test it to, for overheating. That's easy. All you do is you let it run in the shop for about 20 minutes, turn the uh, defrosters on with the heat going, keep that wide open, and then rev it for about five minutes at about 2,500 RPM. It's not that hard. Not to mention, if you're replacing rad hoses, it's probably because there's a leak. I look at the bill, and I look at the car. It's got 200,000-something miles on it. What's on the bill? They didn't even mention that they replaced the thermostat. So they didn't change the right. thermostat. Right, exactly. Because we're going to replace the thermostat if we're doing a coolant flush. We're going to replace the thermostat if we see there's a code for it. If there's no code for it, no trouble code, no work done. Trouble code? Yes, work, work is going to be done. Mazda's most ambitious vehicle. I don't understand people like that. Responsive illness. To close when it's called. You did more work on my car for free, and and you and your complaint is, because I don't know. Old, they open up to flow when the engines wound up. Two hundred something thousand miles. They'll often wear out. Right? Common sense. They charged them five hundred thirty-one bucks to change some hoses and coolant. They certainly should have changed the thermostat. Now that just shows poor training, poor quality of work, and this was at the dealership. Let's hope that changing this thermostat is going to fix it. And if it does, I'm going to advise my customer to go back to the dealer, demand all of his money back because it's just total fraud. They didn't do the simple thing. 
There's usually going to be a code generator for a thermostat. Um, yeah, I mean, we're, we're not going to spend all day diagnosing your car. We get paid an hour and a half to diagnose your car, and we can add on more time, but if we're not seeing any sort of any symptom, we're, we're not going to look into it. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. These young mechanics at a lot of places say, they don't even analyze the stuff. And they certainly don't road test it when they're done. They don't know it's fixed. We do. Any fool knows. If the thing overheats and you don't see any obvious problems, change the thermostat. It can stick shut, right? So it doesn't stick shut. Um, it's not how that works. These things are very, very weird in, in how they work. Uh, the temperature has to be at the right so there's a spring on that, if you notice. I don't know if I can... When he's whining and crying about going back to the dealer. Here, let me... That one might be a good one. We don't want to see your dental, Scotty. I don't know. Anyway, there's a spring on these re on these uh, thermostats. And when they come on heat, that spring compresses and allows the coolant to flow through. It's a little pinprick called a bypass valve. That's also in there. It's a thermostat. It can stick shut, right? So we're going to try it out, see if it fixes it. First we'll Just by those words, if if you had a technician and you're at a dealer come up to you and go, hey, we're going to try throwing this part in your car and see if it fixes it. That, that tells me right off the bat is you're just shooting off the parts cannon. Put a pan underneath to catch the cooler. You don't know what's wrong with it. You don't. No diagnostic labor. You're just firing off the parts cannon. Thermostat is hiding. It's down here. There it is. Right here. It's got a bolt in the top and a bolt on the bottom. You can see the bottom bolt there. We're going to take it out and change it. Now, it may be out of sight, but it shouldn't be out of mind in a good mechanic. That's the first thing they should have changed. I don't know what they're using at these dealerships, what kind of mechanics they're hiring, if they don't even do something that simple. 10 millimeter socket. And who do you work for, Scotty? Oh. That's right. You work for yourself, and you're sitting in a dry your driveway. Okay. Just wanted to make sure we knew where we were. Put a little extension on, and on both it. Yeah, there isn't much working room, but and it's on tight, but it's not that big of a deal. There's one 10 millimeter bolt. Put it here so we don't lose it, and we'll do the other one. And the bottom one's harder to get, so we're going to use a deep well. And if there wasn't a worse location than the wiper cowl, hell, let's just put it right on top of the engine. Well, 10 millimeter. Where there's a well, there's a way. If it sticks in deep, just use a deep well socket to get over the thread. It's not that easy to see, but it's not that hard of a job. Now I can get it with my bare finger. And here comes number two. Then we just pull on it. Put that right on top of the engine. Comes. There's the thermostat. Now, judging by the corrodedness of the gasket, this is the original one. Why, oh, why they didn't replace the thermostat is beyond me. I guess it must have been a young mechanic who doesn't know that much about cars. Didn't think, oh, thermostat, it's a car with 200-something thousand miles. Try the cheapest part that could possibly fix it. No, $500 worth of hoses that he probably didn't need, and it didn't fix the problem. Because they didn't even run. I'll wait till he's done. Road test it. New okay, there we go. This guy is like road tester, road tester, road tester. Yes, road tests are great. Road tests do not fix everything. If you have a broken axle and I'm road testing it, I'm going to feel it. I'm going to know it's there. Something like this, you, you're going to be looking for coolant residue. You're going to be looking under a microscope in this engine bay trying to figure out exactly where the coolant's leaking from. This isn't something simple. He's making it seem like it's simple. It's not. Thermostat and gasket, we'll put it in. It just pushes back in the hole right there. There's the new one pushed in its hole. Then you just put the thermostat cover on it and bolt it on. Not to just mention, they would have had trouble codes for this. And bolt it on. First, put them on finger tight so the gasket doesn't slip. You don't want the gasket slipping. Then you can get the deep wall socket 10 millimeter, flip it, and tighten it up. Then you put coolant back in. We'll get our pan. And it looks to me like they even light up. Wait a minute. It's pretty old and dirty. This looks one. like. So I'm draining it all out. This looks like the Matrix. Coolant in. Now you notice this is Xerox, but it's Asian vehicle one. You don't have to go buy the expensive stuff at Toyota. Realize Toyota does not make coolant. They just buy it from somebody. This is what's called the Holt coolant. Hybrid organic acid technology. 
And that's when you're using the scotch. So after draining it up, I'm putting... This is coming from the same... <laughs> this is coming from the same guy who said, Oh, yeah, don't buy fuel cleaners. They're bad for you. But go and spend the extra money on some expensive hybrid coolant. New stuff in. It's always better to use the... 50-50 dilution. That way it always stays 50-50. If you use pure, you don't know what's inside. 50-50 is what you want, so buy it that way. Or hear me out. When you took the thermostat out, you probably drained all the coolant out of the engine, which means you're going to take at least a gallon and a half of coolant. So what you could do is you could buy the concentrate, dump that whole gallon in there, and then fill the whole gallon up with water, and then dump that in the coolant, and guess what you got? A 50-50 mix. It costs a little more, but what the heck? It works right. Now, we have to get the air out of the system, so we're going to start the car and turn the AC on full blast. You don't turn the AC on. You turn the heat on full blast. The AC is not going to do anything. We're not pumping coolant through those heater core hoses. We're just sitting there and running and making sure that we stay cool in the process. Now that makes the AC fan come on, so right. you keep it cool while it's warming up, as you can see. Oh, and and this is this is where he starts to slip. Okay. Yes, the fan is gonna run. That is not gonna make the AC doesn't make the engine cooler. You fucking idiot. AC does not make it cooler. AC makes it... Oh, my God. Hey, the fan's blowing. And another... AC makes the cabin cooler. You put the heater on, coolant goes through the lines. Therefore, you're able to tell the difference. You're, you're, you're able to get more coolant cycling, heat the engine up more overall. trick is this. Also, turn the heater on full blast. Because then the heater will recirculate and get air out of the heater core, which is hiding inside here. Only if you're running the heat. If you're running AC, then you're not. You're, you're not psych circula circulating any coolant. You're just fucking it up. You're creating an air bubble inside the heater core, which causes your heater core to go bad. Air can get stuck in there. And as it warms up, add coolant. Jeez, we're almost 12 minutes in. We're I... also going to replace the radiator cap. This is the original one with 200-something thousand miles. The springs will wear out over time. But before you put it on... We let the car warm up to get the air out, but then we let it sit for about 40 minutes. Because then, if there's any air, a lot of times it'll migrate, and you can pour more coolant in. All the way to the top, you can see... Get away with a great deal at the Hyundai Getaway Sales <laughs> Event. Now's the time to get in. See a bunch of air migrated. Then we're going to start it up again and chuck it. Then top it up the rest of the way. Okay, so if you have a, the right tools for the job, which he clearly doesn't, uh, there's a funnel that actually attaches right here. And that funnel clamps down, and then it comes up, and it comes up high enough to where you can just pour the coolant in and run the engine. And as you run it, once that thermostat opens up, you're going to see big bubbles coming out of the funnel. I, I mean, I, I did that when I worked at Pet Boys. You don't even need dealer tools for that. Keep going until all the bubbles are gone. Then put the top on nice and tight. Uh, the old cap, it came off real easy, loose. This is nice and tight. You can see it. Now we're going to take it for a good road test. So we'll start it up. Starts right up. Yeah, I bet it's been running great with that AC in there. And away we go. So away we go on a magical mystery tour. We can see it's staying a little under halfway. So hey, your low tire away light's away on. we go. Sir, you got a flat tire. We're driving a good half hour on the highway. Yeah, well, did all that and you still haven't fixed the exhaust. Town. So far it's staying good. You want to test it both on the highway and in town, 15, 20 minutes of each. Now, as you can see, it stayed pretty much in the middle. But there's one thing I'm worried about now, and that's oh. a possibility with all this overheating since it happened twice uh -huh. after it was fixed uh -huh. and happened again. This is why he it checks the head, the head gasket. Oh, so called it. And do a head called gasket. it. He could have. <laughs> so he does all that and blames the dealer only to say, yeah, well, it might be the head gasket. <laughs> it might need a new engine. Put a big fan in front and let it cool down. Don't need to do that. Now we'll do a 
Head gasket leak test to see if the head gasket's been damaged. Well, now we'll turn the fan off and we'll test the head gasket. So we get our block leak test. Mm hmm. We'll take the top off and we'll pour it. By the way, in the steps of diagnosis, this is the first thing you should do with a car with 250,000 miles on it is test the head gasket. They probably did this at the dealer and it passed, so then they started looking for leaks. Some of the blue liquid. You can see it's blue. Put the top back. So the way this works is basically it sucks the exhaust gas from the coolant. If there's exhaust gas mixing in with the coolant, that'll turn green and it'll let you know it's bad. Uh -huh. Then we stick it in the radiator, make a vacuum with the pump. Now we start the vehicle, see if it changes colors. If it goes blue to yellow, head gasket's blown. And so you misdiagnosed. As you can see, oh. it's, it's not yellow yet, <laughs> but it's getting yellow. It's not the solid blue that it was before. Coming to find out that you misdiagnosed it after yelling about the dealer. And what that means is, it's got a small leak. I'm gonna try in the head gasket. Maybe it'll work. Maybe it won't. It's got 244,000 miles. It's probably time to say goodbye to this car. Now, even though it ran. Even though you know he claims Toyotas are the most reliable things on the planet. Ain't that funny? Okay for me. It was starting to lose a little coolant. I had to add some more coolant to it. So that shows it's burning the coolant. Now, I put in some head gasket sealer. You just pour it in. We'll see what happens. Maybe. Bad idea. Don't ever do that. You'll clog up the channels in your engine and you'll make sure that it overheats and blows up. Don't you ever, ever put head gasket sealer in your car. They're, they're gimmicks. They are gimmicks. Maybe it'll work. Maybe it won't. But it's probably time to say goodbye to this and car. And you clog up the radiator as well. I can't say if it blew after the dealer had worked on it. It's probably what it they did. They put they head gasket it, sealer in it, and clogged the radiator, and blew it up. Job and didn't test the system like I did with a block. Oh, yeah, test. yeah, yeah, yeah. Just you, you <laughs> even a broken clock is right twice a day. You figured it out after you did an unnecessary repair. You suck. See if the head gasket had been damaged. Obviously, it has some damage. Hey, maybe the sealer will last a while. Who knows? But it was not <laughs> repaired and diagnosed correctly. It wasn't diagnosed correctly by you. At the dealer for sure. Because all they had to do is that simple test I just did to see that, mm, well, they had You mean the one you should have done and in the first you place? You wouldn't have put hoses and all kinds of stuff on. You, you just, just said, you can't put hoses and all kinds of stuff on. You just did a whole coolant flush and a thermostat, and you were still wrong. Okay, it overheated. Why did it overheat? Well, the head gasket's blowing. Do you want to repair it, or do you want to forget it? Because that was 500 something dollars just wasted, really. But I am trying to seal her. I put in some virus head gasket sealer. Don't ever let touch it. Idle for half an hour with the heat and the AC on. Then you let it cool for half an hour, and you repeat that six times or so. Let it sit overnight, then pray a whole bunch that it'll hold up. Thinking about going solar? Just oh, pray. Whether it's worth it for I know I did it, help. did it wrong, but just pray. My customer, he bought this car brand new and he loves it. He's Toyota Sienna 2013, I want to call it. Deal for service fee, and they said, you need your rear differential replaced or rebuilt for thousands okay. of dollars. And it's unsafe to drive it that way. Trying to scare him into spending all that money. First question, is it front wheel drive or all wheel drive? If it's all wheel drive, then it's going to have a problem with the differential because of the tread tolerances in the tire. You know, blow out the spider gear, and yes, you are going to need a new rear differential. Let's see how Scotty diagnoses this. My wife's brother, he had one, and they tried to ream him in Houston, Texas, with a power steering pump. He had it for 10 years. They said, you need a power steering pump. So they ordered it. But Two it different engines, by the way. One's a 3.0, oh, one's a 3.5. He was still driving the thing around and had no problems at all. And that was like a $600 repair. This thing would have been thousands. So, not trusting them, they took it to an independent mechanic who said, there's nothing wrong with the rear end or the differential. And this was a year ago. And you needed struts in the back because they weren't up. All right. So, based on he's saying rear differential, I can determine that this is rear wheel drive. So, we're looking at suspension components because of a rear wheel drive noise. So... He put the struts on, but he didn't touch the differential. See, it's still the original <coughs> differential under here. 
I'm looking at a drive shaft, not a different. Oh, okay, now I see it. So here's your CV boot, here's your drive shaft, and this right here in the corner that he's about to turn away from is your differential. You got the shocks on the back of springs. Where are the shocks? Because I see springs. I don't see any shocks. Springs, but the differential is. There's your differential right there. It's still the same as it was a year ago. And realize this is a limited all-wheel drive. Limited is just the trim package for the interior. AWD is all-wheel drive. A lot of them are just. Which means all drive. four this wheels of power. All-wheel drive front and rear, and they told them the rear diff was going out. It was dangerous. A couple weeks later, after that work, they took it to a different Toyota dealer. Who we'll looked up the paperwork that had been done at Toyota? They got it on computers. And what did they? Yes, yeah, so all of our systems are intertwined. We know exactly when you go to a different dealership if it's the same manufacturer. We know exactly where you go and what was done and what warranties you have, what your title status is, everything. We know it all. We just don't make a big deal out of it because we don't care. They say it didn't need anything. There was nothing wrong with the differential. Now, these Toyota dealerships are like 20, 30 miles apart. It just shows that just because they're a dealership doesn't mean they're going to treat you honestly, that they're going to give you a fair deal. Now, the second guy granted the Toyota. Whoever owned that Toyota dealership, they were doing the fair thing. But the first dealership, they out and out lied to the guy. Kind of reminds me of when I was back in Houston and that old... Kind of like the uh, the last one where they lied to you about, uh, <laughs> about the thermostat that you misdiagnosed. Old lady bought the Toyota Tacoma made in Mexico, and they hit her for 12 grand more than... It was supposed to be sold for, and they said, ah, too. Dealers do that all the time. It's a supply and demand thing. You can have a house that's worth 250 grand and have a realtor sell it for 350. It's not uncommon. We had you sign the paperwork, but then after old Scotty made it. As a matter of fact, buying a car is the second most biggest purchase you'll ever make in your life. And it's the most appreciating value that you'll ever have in your entire life. Video on it. The next day she goes in and they gave her a check for $12,000 saying, oh, this was all one big mistake. This is the same dealership that said there's nothing we can do about it. You signed the paperwork. But after I made the video, magically she got her $12,000 back. Here the owner was very smart. He didn't take their word for it for that kind of money. He went someplace else and found out he didn't need that work done at all. And that's a big deal. That's why you have to not trust anybody these days when you're getting your car worked on if they're trying to sell you expensive stuff. And to me it kind of amazes me because... Sometimes I get people go to a dealership mm -hmm. and they'll tell them they need $6,500 worth of work. And it'll be on a car that's worth maybe $2,000. I mean, to me, it's just... Yes, that will happen, especially when you blow up your transmission on a Toyota with 260,000 miles. Um, no, but enough about that. We're, 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 what are, yes, we will tell you that your car does need $6,000 in repairs in on a $2,000 value. We'll also call you up on our own cell phones and say, hey, buy a new car. Don't don't fix this. It's not worth it. Just like they're crooks, but they're Every dealership is different. Nobody's going to spend that money. You think they could maybe hit them for 1000 or 800 But no. They make these inflated prices up, and in this case, they completely made it up. Here we go from the second dealer. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> Now, I'll tell you exactly what I'm thinking when I see this. Customer states worrying noise coming from vehicles. Sounds like it happened more around 55 or coming off the highway. Confirms customer concern. Okay, so they confirmed that there was a worrying noise. Inse inspected suspension on the lift. Found the rear wheel bearings are making noise. Inspected the drive shaft and did find some play. Inspected the rear differential. The rear differential is operating as designed. So... Right off the bat, when I hear 55 coming off the highway on a deceleration, what that's going to tell me is that's going to tell me maybe this is a wheel bearing issue, right? I'm not going to suspect differential right off the bat. Um, found the rear wheel bearings are making noise. Yeah. Shocker. It's almost like I just said wheel bearing. Inspected the drive shaft, did find some play. Now, when they say that, they're saying, hey, we found some play, but we don't really think this is the problem. Inspected the rear differential. Rear differential is operating as designed, meaning 
They did not find the differential was the issue. They found that the wheel bearings were the issue. They say Inspector Gottschalk found a little play. Inspector, the rear differential and differential is operating as designed. So here yes. we go around, and what do I hear in the rear end? I don't hear anything. There's nothing wrong with the differential. Correct. That's what they just said. Are you stupid? Whatsoever. No, of course you can. That's literally what they just said. I don't understand where the disconnect is. You watch any of my videos. The Toyota Sienna's are really the best vans in the world. There's no arguing that. The only thing that I've ever seen go wrong with them is some of them as they age. The intermittent steering shaft goes bad. Yes. And you got to replace it. And it's a thousand something dollars. I'll agree with that. But this one doesn't have enough mileage for that yet. And it's not really worn out. They just. There's one crucial failure point with these minivans is if you get hit right in the back here in this quarter panel area forget it the insurance company is going to total out your car because now this door can't move at all they have to replace the the top roll bar here the c pillar and the rear quarter panel and possibly the trunk and they have to re-put in the rail here which is part of the body to uh to get this door to move ever again and getting it moving right is just a pain in the ass. Basically tried to rip them off for a very expensive differential when it didn't need any work done at all. So again, they said differential is operating as designed. What does that tell me? That tells me there's no freaking problem with it. So you're making a big deal out of literally nothing. So realize just because you buy a dependable car, it doesn't mean you're not going to get high repairs with dishonest shops. I have seen this happen so many times. I even had a guy come to me once who said, I'm getting rid of my Toyota Corolla. Okay, I just want to talk about one thing here. I, I think that Scotty is a specialist in Toyotas. The reason I say that is because everything he talks about is Toyota. And everything he complains about with Toyota is the price. But here's the thing, that the, the price is the price because it's Toyota. Nothing's going to be engineered to last long and be cheap to fix. They just, they're not synonymous with each other. You're going to have something that's going to be extremely expensive and long-lasting or something that's cheap to fix and will break frequently. There will never be an equilibrium. It's like the housing market with the interest and, and home prices. Oh, it was the worst car I ever had. I kept having to spend all this money on repairs. So I checked out the car. It turns out that probably none of them ever needed doing. But you got a Toyota Corolla. I've seen them with 300,000 miles. And the only thing I ever done was oil changes and brake jobs. That is it. What about spark plugs at 100 k? I'm sorry. What about spark plugs at 100 k? Because that's routine maintenance. What about brakes every 60,000 miles? Because that's routine maintenance. What about tires every 75,000 miles? Because that's routine maintenance. You're missing so many things here. Don't just say it's, you can just change the oil and it's good to go. Because it's not. Some of them didn't even change the transmission fluid. And they were... Another good idea, Scotty. Still running perfectly fine. So don't let people sell you into things. Thinking that, oh, I'll take it to the dealer. They do good work and they know what they're talking about. And we do. We go through, again, 40 different certifications. So what? I can sit there and say that I have them and that's that? No, I use them in applications. They're real world stuff. We, I mean, I go, I have to go to a building in New York for training classes. This isn't easy stuff. This is hard stuff. Stuff that, like right now, there's six different electrical courses that I have to be taking. These guys have millions of dollars of overhead. Who pays it? You as the customer. So, Right, because you're also buying cars. You're at a 7-Eleven. They have overhead that they have to pay for. You know how they pay for it? Customers. With YouTube, you probably have overhead, Scotty. You know how you pay for it? Customers. Subscribers. Speaking of subscribing, subscribe and like. Thank you. They'll just make stuff up, and I see it all the time, unfortunately. Usually it's not this bad where they tell you you need thousands of dollars repair on the rear end when there's absolutely, positively nothing wrong with it. But still, you, you were driving 30. Big quote, find somebody who's honest. 
he was lucky he had an independent mechanic who said no, and then the other Toyota dealer agreed, probably because he found out that the independent mechanic said there's nothing wrong and it would make him look bad if he said yes, the other dealer was right, so you still got to know they don't care. Knows what they're talking about. But don't take anybody's word as gospel on any car with any repair, especially a Toyota that doesn't break, unless you have a really serious problem. And even then, you want it analyzed correctly. As you see my video, finding a source of car noises, you get a device like that that's got four sending units. You put one in different parts of the car. Then you put... We don't even have those at the dealer. We don't need them. It's an unnecessary tool to buy, and it's well over $2,000 just for a tool that no one's ever going to use it's not worth it put on the headphones and drive it and you click one two three four sensors and listen to the noise until you pinpoint where the noise is from always have that done if somebody tells you you need something like a transmission or rear end i've seen it where guys wanted to sell a differential for thousands of dollars it was an axle bearing the axle bearing was like forty dollars and yeah the labor's like maybe two hundred dollars but it An axle bearing usually, no, you know what, He's. I'll give him that. An axle bearing can be replaced without, uh, without replacing the axle, but that's only on the passenger side, and you, it's called the carrier bearing. It's not thousands of dollars, so always. And it is about 1,200 bucks. Just make sure they're not trying to sell you something that you don't need that's super expensive. Because look at the Sienna. The leather seats are still in good shape. The car's in excellent shape. <laughs> Why would you want to get rid of a car that runs that good? They were just hoping that they could sell them an expensive repair. Dude, no one said that it was the differential. Literally no one. Nobody said that. No one said it was the differential. Because they liked the vehicle? I mean, I've seen these things with half a million miles on them, right? And this is like 150. So it's got a lot of life left in it. But they just thought, oh, well, it's so nice inside and everything. Let's see how much they can gouge them for. We don't care whether you have cloth seats, leather seats, whether you have a... Uh, that's not even brand new. We don't care about that, Scotty. We don't give a damn about it. <laughs> we give a damn about fixing the problems that exist. Not about how nice your car is and how much money we can make on it. We could, we could literally sit there and change oil all day and make more money. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, oh, I do. remember to ring that bell. So, all right, how are you part of the 101st Airborne? And now all of a sudden you're a mechanic. That I don't understand, but another video. Anyway, all right, like, subscribe. I'm out.